For anyone who's seen my video on the Korean State Railway, you'll know that Pyongyang Station is the heart of the National Railway Network. Well, beneath the Grand Station building sits Yongguang Metro Station, the heart of Pyongyang's metro network. Well, not quite the heart. In fact, it's quite far out from the heart. Okay. For any local traveller arriving in Pyongyang by train, Yongguang Station is the gateway to the Pyongyang Metro, or Pyongyang Tiacholdo. So, first of all, what does the network look like? For that, we'll have to ask ourselves the question that's printed on every map in every metro station on the network. Odiro Kashironnika? Where are you going? Well, starting at Puhung, the Choloma line passes to eight stations, terminating at Bulkumbyeol. The Choloma line takes its name from the winged horse of Korean mythology. The statue of Choloma in Pyongyang is served only by the Choloma line, as opposed to the Hyokshin line. Hyokshin means innovation, and the Hyokshin line also passes through eight stations. Now with all that sorted, here's a brief history of the network. Construction began on the Pyongyang metro in 1965. The network, one of the deepest in the world at around 110 metres below ground in some places, was opened in stages between 1969 and 1973. However, Yongguang Station, beneath the railway station, and Puhung Station at the end of the Cholima line weren't completed until 1987. These particular grandiose stations gave the Pyongyang Metro worldwide notoriety. Since 1973, the network has become one of the capital city's most utilised forms of public transport alongside the tram network, completed in the 1990s, and the trolleybus network, which has been running since the 1950s. The Pyongyang Metro is estimated to cater to between 300 and 700,000 riders per day, traversing 22.5 kilometers of track and helping locals commute to and from the center of Pyongyang. For years, myth grew around the Pyongyang Metro, as tourists were only permitted to travel on a small section of the network. However, today, both lines are traversable for foreign tourists. All foreigners on the network will be part of a pre-arranged tour, and so won't get a chance to experience the super low price that locals pay for transit. A standard ticket costs 5 won, about half a US cent. Although nowadays, plastic metro cards have become more commonplace. But anyway, what are the stations really like? Well, let's imagine a local chap is heading into the city from South Pyongyang. The southern terminus of the Choloma line is Puhung, or Renaissance Station. Puhung Station sits just down the road from the internationally famous Mansudae Art Studio, and relatively close to Chongchun Sport Street in West Pyongyang. Travelling along the Choloma line, we reach Yongguang, or Glory Station. This station serves the Pyongyang Railway Station, as well as being close to Kimtech University of Technology and the Koryo Hotel one of the capital's most high-class hotels open to both foreigners and locals. Continuing down the Cholima line, we arrive at Ponghua, or Torch Station. This stop is located right next door to the Party Founding Museum. Just down the road from Ponghua is the Pyongyang Grand Theatre. The following two stations are the most central in the city. First, Sungni, or Victory Station, is situated at the heart of Changjon Street. This area is famous for its distinctive white modern-style buildings which tower over the heart of the city. It's also the gateway to Kim Il-sung Square, Department Store No. 1, and the Ok Nguyen Guan restaurants, along with various important government and civil buildings. The next stop is Morambong Station. The station building sits on the opposite side of Victory Street from the Mansu Day Grand Monument, the stunning 22-metre-high statues of the President Kim Il-sung and the General Kim Jong-il. Also nearby, the Choloma statue, Morambong Park, and the Liberation Tower. Continuing down the line, we stop at Kaeson, or Triumph Station. The station building opens out onto the Arch of Triumph, an enormous celebratory arch built to commemorate the anti-Japanese conflict between 1925 and 1945. Passengers heading to Kim Il-sung Stadium, or the Kaeson Funfair, should also alight here. The next stop on the Choloma line is Chonu, or Comrade Station. Located beneath the stunning new development on Ryomyong Street, Chonu Station is located just up the road from Jonsung Station on the Hyokshin Line. Travellers looking to transfer to the other line should switch stations here. Further up the track, Bulkumbyeol, or Red Star Station, is the terminus of the Cholima Line. Situated just down the road from the Three Revolutions Exhibition, a large venue documenting the Korean Revolution in the fields of ideology, culture and technology. Returning to Chonu Station, 
A transfer to John Sung Station requires a brief walk up the Omyong Street, up to the April 25th House of Culture, often the site of important cultural events, including Workers' Party Congress meetings. Heading east from John Sung, we pass through two stations. Sam Hung, or Three Revolution Station, is located between two of the country's most prestigious universities. Kim Il-sung University is the highest ranking university in the DPRK. Meanwhile, the University of Foreign Studies, on the opposite side of the road, is the origin of many of the DPRK's top diplomats. The terminus of the Hyokshin Line in East Pyongyang is Nagwon, or Paradise Station. Situated in front of the Pyongyang Central Zoo, which caters to any local or tourist with a desire to walk through a tiger's mouth, the station also serves the Pyongyang Botanical Gardens. The line also terminates just in front of the Revolutionary Martyrs Cemetery, the resting place of many famous anti-Japanese revolutionaries, including the first wife of the President Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-suk. Heading west from Chongsung, however, the Hyokshin Line passes through its namesake stop. Hyokshin, or Innovation Station, is nestled in a quiet corner of Pyongyang on the banks of the Potonggang. From here, the line passes beneath the ever-expanding Victorious Fatherland Liberation War Museum, before stopping at Konsol, or Construction Station. Konsol is located outside the Mammoth Ryugyong Hotel in the heart of Pyongyang. The city's most distinctive feature, this hotel, despite not being open yet, is covered in LEDs, providing incredible displays for the city at night. The next station is Hwangumbol, or Golden Field Station. Again, another quiet station, its nearest major attraction sits on the opposite side of the Potonggang, the Pyongyang Ice Rink. Continuing along the Hyokshin Line, we arrive at Kongguk, or Foundation Station. This stop is the penultimate station on our journey, and sits opposite the Potonggang Station, on the Pyongnam Line, which leaves Pyongyang and heads southwest towards the port city of Nampo. Finally, we reach Kwangbok, or Liberation Station. Kwangbok Street is one of Pyongyang's major arterial roads and is lined with important government and civilian buildings, including apartments, restaurants and shops, topped off with some distinctive architecture. The Pyongyang Metro provides a seamless and stylish method of transport around the capital. For local Pyongyangers heading to the railway station to catch the train, the transition between underground and overground at Yongguang couldn't be smoother. Almost as smooth as this shameless plug for my other video. If you've enjoyed this, please check out my video on the Korean Railway Network. Thanks for watching.